it's an anti-state propaganda right, film right. and there's plenty of um of uh, of uh anti-state violence to keep even the most jaded cinephobic class warrior happy <laughs> what do you think of the current political situation i mean obviously things have been quite quiet there's not been a lot happening and now with a Everyone's talking about the forthcoming recession, that people are going to be hit with jobs and home repossessions. I mean, do you think that's going to present new opportunities for sort of political anarchist movements to come out and maybe take new forms and new ideas of struggle? Yeah, it would. I mean, I guess it's too glib to go, yeah, great, the banks collapse and and we all um, collectivise in the streets around it. But it would be a pity um, if, you know, if, if people didn't, see the opportunities um that are here i mean i guess when the house prices all when the house prices all collapse and everybody who you know was duped into buying into capitalism you know and understandably so you know who bought homes they'll end up with debts that are, are bigger than their houses are worth and people who can't afford to pay the rent and the food prices are going up and stuff like this well maybe actually you know your uh, people will start thinking about well you know is this right can you know can we keep going this way can we maybe collectivize a bit and uh and look to each other to support us when the state has so quite obviously let us down and also this idea of um you know you can do well you know the 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 the, the dream is that you, yeah you you climb over your neighbor to get yourself into a a more powerful, financially better position. Well, you know, if that all comes apart, it would be nice to think um, that people might look to their neighbours and and have some solidarity. And as much as you know, we're all stuffed together. Um, I guess if there are house repossessions and um, uh, evictions and people, you know, can't pay the rent, well, it'd be nice to think that maybe, you know, there's been. A lot of house building, all the 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 the, the build to let brigade have built all these properties that they're not going to be able to let out. Um, you know, if that's matched with a, a large um, number of homeless people, then you know, I'd like to see the squatting movement take off yeah. again. I, there's no reason why that couldn't It'd happen. It'd be great to see the kind of squatting movement there was after the Second World War, where people who didn't have houses just moved into all the buy to let places. Uh, I guess also, I mean, historically as well, um, sort of successful ish, uh, <laughs> successful ish anarchist groups. You know, I guess in recent history have done well, you know, in times of hardship. When if they can, you know, come along and, and go, well, actually, we can, we can bring something to the situation that that is useful to people. I mean, if that means, um, you know, let, you know, let's let's make shoplifting something that's socially more acceptable um, than it was. Um, you know, if, if people want to storm the supermarkets and take all the food out and distribute it in their neighbourhoods, I'm sure that will go down well um, with. Uh, with lots of people, um, I guess the opportunities are there. You know, especially within the activist anarchist movement. Uh, you know, half of these people have uh, uh, have been in university for years, so they you know they're quite well educated. So you know, if your neighbours are having trouble with, you know, budgeting, or if they're having trouble with the banks or with the bailiffs, then you know you can help them out on both levels. That means you can help them out, maybe possibly you know w- with the legalities. But then you can also turn up when the bailiffs come. If there's thirty people there, you know, waiting for the bailiffs, then the bailiffs are going to have to go away empty-handed. You were at the. Uh, we've only got a few minutes left. You were at the Anarchist Book Fair yesterday. And I noticed. I think you went to hear John Pilger, the journalist, speaking. Also, Newsnight's Paul Mason taking time off for analysing the international. I mean, are we seeing a mass defection from the BBC and the Daily Mail and the ranks of journalism to anarchism? Is this something we can well, look forward to? Well, it was interesting actually because the, you know, of course, the Anarchist Book Fair. There was like you know talks on um, you know the Mexican Revolution and and whatnot. But it, it was interesting to see a few of these characters there. Pilger described himself as an anarchist. You know, fair enough, he was playing to the crowd a bit. But um, I thought he spoke well and um, w- was extreme enough um, to upset some of the more liberal elements in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, you know, interesting to hear what he said about how Barack Obama, that all he really offered was um, this return to the illusion that, that um, people have some sort of influence over... Uh, geopolitics, you know, and as far as the world's concerned, nothing will change with under Obama. He, you know, he was interesting. Paul Mason, um, you know, Newsnight economics editor. Um, 
he, who was uh, I, d I really didn't know very much about him. He's um, a, a mine of information on syndicalist history, and he's just written this great book on working class struggle that I got a copy of yesterday, and I would, uh, you know, encourage people to go and dig it out and read it. We've got about two minutes left, so I'm going to ask you about your your former life as an anarcho punk. <laughs> since I guess <laughs> half half, <laughs> half the anarchists in the country came out of all those men in their fifties now, forties, or when they used to wear crass shirts on their back and all that. Yeah. Looking back on sort of crass anarcho punk and that, what, what do you what do you think of that now? It's quite noisy, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't hear the word. <laughs> yeah. Sing us a crass song live. No, or, I don't want to sing you a crass song. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, of course, like, you know, uh, the, I guess a lot of people in my generation, you know, we were politicised, we were brought into it, you know, we were lured into it by Joe Strummer and then we were, like, banged over the back of the head by Penny Rimbound, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, they, and all, all stops in between, I guess, you know, if, uh, if it wasn't for, uh, I don't know, I guess we got Thatcher to thank and she's gone mad, and she? Like, if it wasn't for Thatcher, they probably, uh, they, we wouldn't have had uh, something so iconic and poisonous to rally against so uh, we should thank the old bitch as we stick her in the ground maybe but uh, she's not been wheeled out this week to say you can't buck the market I know this she's, <laughs> she's kept a bit quiet now I think you're right it was someone who was so horrible it did you a lot of power to organise I mean last question really do you think music and film can actually aid political struggle do you think it can push things or is it just a reflection of what's going on and can't really make much difference no not at all because I think it's something that draws people in and it's you know it's that oh if it ain't my revolution if I can't dance to it it ain't my revolution sort of thing and if you know it's great tunes uh, you know sung by you know gorgeous oh. girls in short skirts is always going to get people on side <laughs> isn't it you know what I mean anarchist or otherwise yeah, okay, that's brilliant, Simon. There's loads more questions I'm going to ask you about, especially your career as an anarcho punk. But <laughs> history for the may next not hear time, that. Yeah. Look forward to seeing your film on the Tottenham A. Right, that's the end of the show for this week. Thanks a lot. Thanks Simon. a lot.